Hello, and welcome, once again, to Stately Vaughn Manor. And today, I've got a tag for you. I was tagged to do the 20 question books, book tag. Uh, I was tagged by Victoria Reads Sometimes, who has a fantastic channel. You should all go and watch Victoria Reads Sometimes. Victoria, I'm pretty sure, actually reads all the time, but her channel is Victoria Reads Sometimes, and it's great. Uh, she is one of those booktube channels where like if a new video pops up you just click on it it doesn't even matter what it's about you just watch it and uh yeah she's one of those and it, she's really good so you should definitely go out and check her out okay first question how many books are too many for a series it depends on the series if the series is john norman's gore then one book is too many if it's a good series uh, and the quality can be maintained, keep writing if you want to. I'll keep reading them, you know? As long as the quality is maintained. I hear, I hear my dogs barking. Just ignore them. Okay, number two. How, many do you, how do you feel about cliffhangers? Well, with, if they're in the book, great. Uh, the only time I don't like cliffhangers is if they're at the end of a book and you don't have a reasonable expectation of getting the next book or reading the next book. Uh, if you do have a reasonable expectation that that next book will come out, uh, then great, cliffhangers are fine. But we all know those, those series where the author's like, yeah, this book's coming out like in a year and a half or something, and yeah, it'll be great, and then the time comes and the book's still not out, and a year later it's still not out, and a year later, and it just goes on and you're never going to get that book, you know, then cliffhangers suck. But if you have a reasonable expectation of a resolution to that cliffhanger, then fine. I'm, I'm all in. Uh, number three, hardcover or paperback? Hardcover. Uh, number four, uh, favorite book. That is an easy one. That would be... The Histories by Herodotus. Uh, I love this book. It is a fantastic achievement. It is the first work of history, at least it is credited as such. And Herodotus was uh, an amazing man. Uh, he traveled all across the Greek world and the ancient Near East. Near East. He went to different cities. He went to Egypt. Uh, he went to all kinds of other places. And uh, he wrote this incredible work of history. Uh, basically about the Greek and Persian War and why these two cultures went to war with each other. Uh, but it is also an examination of the different cultures involved. He has a really close examination of the Persians and the Egyptians and the Scythians and all these different peoples, including a lot of their legends and stories. And it's amazing. It's simply amazing. It's just an incredible, incredible achievement. And... Uh, yeah, and this is the version to get the landmark Herodotus because this version not only has incredible illustrations throughout, but it also is uh, full of very useful maps and notes. But the maps are really useful. And he has maps just all over this book. And the reason he does is because Herodotus is always talking about different places and uh, a lot of those places don't exist anymore. There are some places where uh, the names have changed. Uh, so it's helpful to have all those maps. And uh, just, just a great, great volume. I've, this is, mine's a little beat up because I've carried it with me all kinds of places. And I've read this book multiple times. So that was an easy one. Herodotus. Uh, okay, favorite book. So least favorite book. Oh, hold on. I threw this one across the room. Have to go grab this. Okay. William Faulkner. The Sound and the Fury. Now, I know this is going to upset some people that I've chosen this book as my least favorite book, but it immediately popped to mind as my least favorite book. Because it's completely incomprehensible the first time you read it. Uh, you pretty much have to read this twice to figure out what's going on, and you shouldn't have to read a book twice to know what's going on, in my opinion. And of course, William Faulkner 
he did that deliberately. He's cruel. He's cruel to us readers. Uh, but, you know, I know that this book is a work of genius. I get it. I'm not saying it's not. I'm just saying it's my least favorite, and I can't stand William Faulkner's The Sound of the Fury. So there, William Faulkner. Okay. Number six, love triangles, yes or no? Uh, I guess it depends. Uh, I, I watched Victoria Reed's sometimes version of this tag, and I get the idea that love triangles are kind of big in YA fiction, which I never read because I'm ancient, and I read mostly OA fiction, and I guess love triangles aren't as big a thing in OA fiction. Uh, but hey, if they're well done, I'm all for them. Okay, number seven, the most recent book you couldn't finish. If I could finish The Sound and the Fury, there is not a book that I can't finish. I'm pretty careful with books um, because I know I have to finish a book. There's something in my brain that says, Mike, you've got to finish. Don't let this book defeat you. You have to finish this book. And so I will always complete a book uh, no matter what. And I know that's crazy and I know it's weird. and But I do. It's just a compulsion. So I'm pretty careful about the books that I choose. That's why I watch the booktube and listen to all you guys uh, tell me about what's good and bad. Uh, so yeah, but yeah, I, I can't even remember the last book I, I didn't finish. I mean, it was literally decades ago, it must have been. Okay, a book that you are currently reading. Uh, where did, there it is. I've got it over here. This is the book I'm currently reading. It's Chasing Graves by Ben Galley. And the reason I'm reading this is because uh, Steve was, ha Steve from Steve Talks About Books and Stuff, a great channel, Steve Talks About Books and Stuff. But he chose this as this month's uh, uh, choice for his book club. Uh, and I, I had to get on board with that. Uh, so I, I decided, hey, I'm going to read that book too. And then yesterday I realized, oh my goodness, the month is running out. I better read that book. So I, I picked up Chasing Graves by Ben Galley, and I wasn't sure what I was going to get. I knew it was kind of a horror fantasy thing. But there's actually a lot of humor in this book, and it seems to be written pretty well. Uh, yeah, so I, I'm not very far into it. I just started yesterday. I'm 74 pages in. Uh, but it's, it's pretty darn good. I, I like it. And it's supposed to be the number one in the uh, a trilogy. So I've got a couple more books after this that... You know, I'll probably pick up and read if they're as good as this. So, yeah. That's what I'm reading right now. Okay. Let's see. Book you're currently Okay, number nine. The last book you recommended to somebody. Uh, well, there's a couple here. There's The Call of Cthulhu and Other Weird Stories, which I recommended yesterday. Uh, if you saw my fantastic Mythos Monday talk about H.P. Lovecraft, I recommended this. And I recommended it to all of you. Uh, who just want a uh, a shorter book, uh, Lovecraft book, uh, just to see if you like him. Uh, this is a great introductory uh, volume of Lovecraft. The last time I recommended a hu uh, book to a human that I was speaking to one-on-one -on -one with masks on, of course, uh, was this one, Ursula K. Le Guin's The Left Hand of Darkness. And I'm going to take this opportunity to recommend it to all of you who might not have read it yet. It is every bit as good as people say it is. It might even be better. It's fantastic. This book is in my top 10 uh, greatest novels of all time. I love it. Fantastic. Ursula K. Le Guin's The Left Hand of Darkness. Okay. Number 10, the oldest book you have read by publication date. That is an easy one. Let me get it out over here. That would be the Epic of Gilgamesh, first put on stone tablets roughly 3,700 years ago. It is every bit as good now as it was then. It's a fantastic story. Amazing. I love it. You should read it too. The Epic of Gilgamesh. Okay, number 11, the newest book you have read by publication date. That's another easy one. That is Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno-Garcia. This was published last year. Uh, yeah, I really like this book and I, I made a video about it. So you can go watch that. It's just as brilliant as all my videos. Uh, so yeah, Mexican Gothic. And this is, 
I don't know if you've ever had this experience where after you finish a book, you miss the characters in the book. I miss Naomi. I miss the main character of this book. Uh, she was cool. She was smart. She was tough. And she went to cocktail parties. She was awesome. So I miss her. And this was a good book. Um, yeah. So that was the newest book. Okay, newest book I've read. Okay, favorite author. Now, this is this was a bit of a tough question. But the answer has to be, I think, Robert E. Howard, the creator of Conan the Barbarian and so much else. Uh, just a great, great, great pulp writer. Uh, and I, I really love Robert E. Howard. The only author where I've ever traveled to where they lived, I went to Cross Plains, Texas. Uh, I went to Robert E. Howard's house. I saw the small room where he wrote his epic stories. Uh, love Robert E. Howard. And I have since I first read him so many years ago. Uh, probably always will. Robert E. Howard. Has to be Robert E. Howard. Okay. Number 13. Buying or borrowing books. I'm going to go with buying on that one. Number 14. A book that you dislike that everyone seems to like. I guess you, I could have picked Sound of the Fury and the Fury for this uh, because a lot of people seem to like that book. Um, but I'm thinking mostly of like current bestsellers and things like that. Like everybody loved the Da Vinci Code, but I didn't even pick it up because I knew I probably wouldn't like it, you know. So that hasn't happened to me too much. I haven't haven't gone for like the big bestsellers or the books everybody seems to love if I think I might not like them uh, because like I said I will have to read them all the way through if I do pick them up and this did happen to me and the last time this happened to me was with this book the bridges of Madison County this was a while ago but everybody at the time this came out just loved 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 this book the bridges of Madison County um, I didn't love it so this is the one uh, number 15, bookmarks or dog ears? This is a cruel question. You know, you know it's bookmarks. Come on. Who here on BookTube is going to choose dog ears? Blasphemy. Uh, number 16, a book you can always reread. Well, there's a lot of those, and, uh, I'm gonna go with Dracula, probably. It's always gonna be Dracula, but you knew it was Dracula, and I'm always saying I reread Dracula all the time, so I think I'll not choose Dracula because there's another book I reread an awful lot, and that would be Thucydides, uh, The Peloponnesian War. Uh, a fantastic, fantastic book uh, by Thucydides, uh, who is the second great historian in ancient Greece, and I have a similar landmark volume of this writer. I, I reread this quite a book, quite a bit. I always seem to go back to Thucydides, and this is a great edition. Again, has all the maps, all the notes. Uh, there's lots of uh, cool illustrations and things in this book. It's just an excellent, excellent volume. So, yeah, Thucydides. And I will probably talk about Thucydides one day. Lucky you. Okay. Uh, we're on number 17 now. Can you read while listening to music? Yes. Uh, there can be, like, explosions going on in the background, car crashes, gunfights. Uh, it doesn't matter what's going on or how much noise is happening. I can still focus on a book and tune everything out. Because I have learned to tune out reality. It's a, it's a critical skill. Okay, uh, 18. One point of view or multiple? Depends on the book, man. Depends on the book. Okay, number 19. And that, that literally is my answer. I don't, I don't have a preference. It kind of depends on the author and the best way to tell the story. Uh, number 19. Do you read a book in one sitting or over multiple days? Uh... It's, it's usually over multiple days. I very rarely just sit down and just finish a book because I only read for about 40, 45 minutes at a time, maybe an hour. 
Um, and then I have to get up and do something and then I'll come back and I'll read some more if I have the time and then I'll get up and do something and then I'll read some more if I can. Um, yeah, I'm usually up and down with reading. But usually about 40 minutes is probably the average of what I actually sit down and read. And you can't, fin I mean, if you're Steve Donahue, you can read like eight books in that time. But me, no, I'm not gonna finish a book because I'm not the fastest reader in the world. Okay, 20, who do you tag? Yay, we're at the end and I get to tag people. Now, okay people that I tag, you don't have to do the tag, of course. Don't feel obligated. I would love to see to, to see your answers and watch that video, but don't feel obligated. It's okay. I won't be hurt if you don't do the tag. No, it's cool. Only do it if you want to. Uh, but the people I tag, uh, first person I'm going to tag is Gina Stanier. Uh, I actually don't know how to pronounce Gina's last name. I only know Gina is Gina. But Gina Stanier or Stanior, Gina Stanior. I don't know. Let me know, Gina, how to properly pronounce your last name. I probably should have thought about this uh, before I did my video. But yeah, Gina, Gina Stanier. I'm going to link her down below. Uh, and so you can go right to her. She's, she's a great booktuber. She's another one of those that if she has a video that comes up, I'll watch it. You know, uh, and uh, she's really cool. I think she started, I think we started around the same time, you know, so that's cool. Uh, and also, I'm going to tag uh, Attic Diaries. Everybody, lit literally everybody should be watching Attic Diaries. Another great, great booktube channel. Uh, yeah, another one. I don't even care what the video is about. If it goes up, click. I'm watching it if it's Attic Diaries. So I'll put her down below, uh, Attic Diaries down below as well. And thanks once again to Victoria Reads sometimes for tagging me. Uh, great, great booktuber. So all of them I'll put down below. I'll probably put Steve Talks About Books and Stuff down below too because Steve is so cool and he has such a great channel that, you know, people should be watching him as well. So yeah, that was my 20 questions book tag. Tomorrow I have an epic surprise tomorrow. I never overpromise. An epic surprise tomorrow. Uh, and so that'll be fun to do. And Thursday... Will I be back on Thursday? You know, I've been do I I don't remember how long I've been on deep on the booktube. I think it's been about 33 days. And I think I've made 32 videos. I think I've missed one day. So I might miss another day this week. But don't count on it because you know I can't shut up. Thanks guys for stopping by here once again at Stately Fawn Manor. See you next time.